help, help. The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Relax. <laughs> Every week, ladies and gentlemen, we receive a number of letters from listeners, many of them saying that Jell-O can't be beat, that it's so delicious it just can't be improved. Well, the makers of Jell-O appreciate that, of course, but all the same, they look at the matter a little differently. For ever since this grand new dessert was first introduced more than 40 years ago, the Jell-O people have been constantly working to improve it, to make those six delicious flavors even more delicious, to make those grand glowing colors even gayer and more festive to make it thriftier to buy and easier to prepare. In other words, to make Jell-O even better than the best. And your thank you to us has been Jell-O's steady growth in popularity. So remember those big red letters on the box spell Jell-O, and Jell-O assures you of the finest enjoyment, rich flavor, and glowing colors, America's favorite gelatin dessert, now better than ever. <laughs> was Relax, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our program tonight will be devoted to a further description of our trip to Yosemite. Yes, sir. As you may remember, last week, Jack, Mary, Dennis, and myself piled into the Maxwell and left Oakland with Rochester at the wheel. Phil Harris was not a member of our little party as Jack, in a fit of anger, canceled his invitation. It wasn't a fit of anger, Don. He just had to be disciplined, that's all. Nevertheless, Phil left... That guy has to be put in his place once in a while, you know. Nevertheless, I'll Phil I'll teach him to get smart with me. <laughs> Nevertheless, my goodness, Jack! Excuse me, Don. Nevertheless, Phil left in his own car six hours later than we did, and much to our surprise, soon passed us on the road. Much to whose surprise? Quiet. Go ahead, Don. Anyhow, realizing we couldn't reach Yosemite that night, we pulled into an auto court only to find that Phil Harris had taken the last cabin. Who cares? We found a much better place to stay. Some place I rang for a bellboy and a coyote came in. <laughs> well, it was rather primitive. Huh? It is now the following morning, and we are once more on the road headed down the highway toward Yosemite. Killers, now that you got me loving you. Killers, careless in everything you do. Are you just careless as you seem to be? Or do you just careless for me? I said for me! Uh, very good, Rochester, very good. Now sing Scatterbrain. Now, wait a minute, boss. Rochester, I said sk sing Scatterbrain. I'm tired singing for you all the time. Why don't you put a radio in this car? Because I only want to hear what I want to hear. That's why. Oh, Jack, let him rest. He's been singing for an hour. I don't mind singing, Miss Livingston, but at 8 o'clock he wants me to imitate Amos and Andy. <laughs> well? I can't do that blackface stuff. <laughs> You can try, that's all I ask. You don't have to be perfect. There's a car coming, Rochester. I think we better let it pass us. I think it's inevitable. <laughs> Look at that speed demon showing off. He ought to get a ticket. Oh, you're jealous of every car that's got cylinders. I am not. Boy, what a ride. Two days to make 180 miles. Listen, Mary, if you don't like it, get out and walk. How can I walk after two days in this cocktail shaker? <laughs> oh, this car doesn't vibrate so much. It doesn't. You've been trying to get that cigar in your mouth for the last five miles. <laughs> don't worry, I'll make it. Yeah, I never saw anyone like it. It's funny Don and Dennis aren't complaining. I'm fine, Mr. Benny. There you are. Are you all right back there, Don? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, Jack, I'm still a little sleepy. You're sleepy? What about me? You're a nice fellow, Don, but that's the last time I'll ever share a bed with you and Dennis. I didn't have much of it. That's right. You were wedged in pretty tight there. Incidentally, Dennis, what was the idea of wiggling your ears all night long? I dreamt there was a butterfly on my way to a daisy. <laughs> well, that's rather odd. 
You know, Jack, I had a dream, too. I dreamt I was lost in Mexico with Clark Gable. Oh. Mighty nice country down there. <laughs> Yeah, especially this time of year, you know. Another car wants to pass us, Rochester. Okay, boss, let's look nonchalant. <laughs> Never mind, let them go, the fools. There's another guy that ought to get pinched. Oh, he wasn't going so fast. He wasn't, eh? He passed us, and our speedometer says 65 miles an hour. I thought you were going to have that fixed. <laughs> Never mind. Say, boss, there's a big hill up ahead. What'll we do? What'll we do? Climb it, of course. It's pretty steep, you know. Rochester, this car's made hills much steeper than that one. Not doing my regime. <laughs> Just give her the gas. We'll make it. Okay. Hang on, everybody. There you are. We're doing fine. Uh-oh. Well, don't let it die on and you throw it in the second. There ain't no second. Then throw it in the first. What are you waiting for? Okay, boys. There. Now we'll make it. Pull the choke out. Okay. Keep calm, everybody. Don't get excited. We're near the top. We're making it. We're making it. That did it. We're over. <laughs> well, here we are. It was a little dangerous, but we're all right now, eh, Mary? I don't know why I don't punch you right in the nose. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. You weren't afraid, were you, Dennis? No, sir, that was fun. Let's do it again. It won't be necessary. Say, Jack, now the excitement is over, let's stop at that lunchroom up ahead and get something to eat. Okay. There's a gas station alongside of it. Good. We'll put some water in the radiator and some air in the tires. Yeah, and you better put some of that stuff they make a little profit on in the gas tank. <laughs> I was going to get some gas, Rochester, so mind your own business. Well, here we are. Let's stop. <laughs> Gee, I'm hungry. Rocky Crest, ten minutes here, folks. Rochester, you're not driving a bus. Now get out, everybody. Oh, boy, it feels good to stretch. Huh? Yes, sir, I'm stiff as a board. I feel wonderful, simply marvelous. You don't have to be so sarcastic, Mary. What about the women that used to ride across the plains in covered wagons? I envy them. Well, I'll tell you... <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, Mary. If I ever ask you to take a trip with me again, I'll go right out and have my head examined. And if I say yes, they can throw a net over both of us. <laughs> all right, all right. I've got to get some gas, so wait for me in the lunchroom. And if it's not too much trouble, order me a peanut butter sandwich, will you? Okay. Come on, Don. Right with you, Mary. See you later. Now, where did Dennis disappear to? Oh. Oh. Say, <laughs> uh... Say, uh, say, young fella. Yes, sir? I want five gallons of gas, please. Ethyl, pethyl, or schmethyl? The regular gas will be all right. Five gallons, please. The ethyl is much better for your motor. Now, look, buddy, I know what I want. Put in five gallons of regular gas. Okay, you're the doctor. <laughs> you remind me of a fellow that waited on me in a sporting goods store in Oakland. That's my brother, Egbert. Isn't he priceless? He sure is. Oh, Mr. Benny, where'd the gang go? They're in the lunchroom, Dennis. Okay. La, 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 la. <laughs> I never saw such a happy kid. Say, Rochester, Rochester, see what else the car needs. I'm going in and eat. Don't forget the driver, boss. Oh, yes, I'll bring you back something. What do you want, Rochester? I'd like a stuffed pork chop under glass. You'll get a hamburger under mustard and pick a lily. Now, check the tires so we can leave as soon as possible. Okay. Please pass the ketchup, will you, Mary? Here you are, Don. Oh, you're eating already, eh? Did you order my peanut butter sandwich, Mary? Yes, and it was delicious. Oh, fine. Now, order me another one. Say, Mr. Benny, look what I found on this record machine. What, Dennis? Look at number 12 here. It says, Darn That Dream with a vocal refrain by Dennis Day. Oh, one of your records, eh? Well, let's hear it. Put in a nickel. Okay.
I dream each night. You say you love me and you hold me tight. But when I awake, you're out of sight. Oh, darn that dream. Darn your lips and darn your eyes. They lift me high above the moonlit skies. Then I tumble out of paradise. Oh, darn that dream. On that one track mind of mine It can't understand that you don't care Just to change the mood I'm in I'd welcome an ice or nightmare On that dream and bless it too Without that dream I never would have you But it haunts me and it won't come true Or down that dream Bless it too. Without that dream, I never would have you. But it haunts me and it won't come true. Oh, darn that dream. Oh, darn it. Say, Dennis, that was swell. I didn't know you made records. Shall I play it again? No, don't bother. But it was a grand number. You ought to sing it on the program sometime. You're darn right. Gee, the food's good here, isn't it, Jack? Well, we were pretty hungry, Don. Oh, Miss? Yes, sir? That peanut butter was delicious, but I'm still hungry. Give me a T-bone steak for myself and a hamburger to take out. Okay. Two cows. Torture one. <laughs> and by the way, Miss... Uh, I want my steak, a very rare. The T-bones for Tarzan! Okay! <laughs> well, they understand each other anyway. Huh? Let's hurry up and eat, fellas. I'm dying to get to Yosemite. Gee, I'll bet Mr. Harrison's there already. Who, Phil? Oh, he's still sleeping in that auto court. He might have passed us yesterday, but we'll beat him into Yosemite. We will, eh? Yeah, you know the story of the hare and the tortoise, don't you, Mary? The what? The tortoise. You know, turtle. One turtle soup! Coming up! Wait a minute! I didn't order any soup. Oh, pardon me. Scuttle the turtle. See, you can't even open your mouth around here. What's that? There's a parrot over there. Isn't it cute? Where? Oh, yeah, in that cage. Let's go over and talk to it. Gee, I love parrots. That one's a beauty. It sure is cute. Hello, Polly. Hello, Polly. Hello, Polly. <laughs> oh, isn't that marvelous? Polly want a cracker? Polly want a cracker. Gee whiz. You talk to him, Mary. Okay. Hello, Polly. Hurry up, babe. What you doing tonight? <laughs> well, that's terrific. Your steak is ready, sir. Thanks. Gee, Mary, isn't it wonderful the way that bird talks? Huh? Yeah, hurry up and eat your steak, Jack, so we can get out of here. Well, it won't take me long. Oh, miss, will you please fill this thermos bottle with coffee? I want to take it with me. Yes, sir. Very little cream. <laughs> One quart of coffee. There you are. Thank you. Gee, you folks measure everything around here, don't you? <laughs> Stop talking, Jack. We want to get going. I'll be through in a minute, Don. Uh, pardon me, but aren't you Jack Benny from the radio? Yes, I am. I thought so. Would you mind autographing this piece of rye crisp for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be glad to. You know, Mr. Benny, you're my favorite comedian. Well, thanks very much. I like Fred Allen. <laughs> You sound like him, too. <laughs> that parrot's a little fresh there. Here's your autograph, miss. Thanks. Hello again, hello again, hello again. Boy, am I tired of that. <laughs> Nobody asked you to listen, you know. And it's in a tree that fills a breeze. Boy! <laughs> well, plenty of people like that song if you want to know something. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, Jack, you're arguing with a parrot. I don't care. He started it. <laughs> Get out of here. Give me the check, please. For everybody? Yes, it's my treat. And here's 50 cents for you, miss. Well, now I've seen everything. Shoot me! <laughs> oh, how I'd love to. Come on, fellas. Before we go, miss, I want to congratulate you on the marvelous dish of jello you served me. Thank you. I can see now why it's America's favorite gelatin dessert. It's tempting and appetizing, easy to make, and as you know, comes in six delicious flavors. <laughs> Fresh bird, that is. By the way, miss, where's that hamburger? 
Here you are. It's in this bag. Oh, yes. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. You got a spoon in the pocket? I have not. <laughs> Come on, gang. Let's get out of here. I'd rather have a canary any day. You had a canary and you took it back because he couldn't sing Rigoletto. Well, it was in the guarantee. What a guy. He expects Nelson Eddy with feathers. Oh, quiet. Hey, Rochester, here's your sandwich. Thanks, boss. Is everything all set now? Everything's fine. All ready to go. Good. How much do I owe you, young man? That'll be $2.10 for gas and $12 for the tire. The tire? What tire? Hop in, boss. Let's get going. <laughs> Wait a minute, Rochester. What's the idea of buying a new tire? Well, you told me to check them, and the right front one was a little low. Yes? So I put some air in it, then kicked it to see if it was hard. Uh-huh. I never should have done that. <laughs> well, that's no excuse for buying a new tire. If it blew out, you could have patched the inner tube. Patch it? We couldn't even find it. <laughs> well, here's your money, mister. And from now on, Rochester, before you buy anything, please consult me first. Come on, everybody, let's go. Where's Dennis? Oh. <laughs> well, pile in. Pile in, fellas. I'll get, the, I'll get the car started. Are you going to drive, boss? Yes, I'll drive for a while so you can eat your sandwich. Are you ready to go, Mr. Benny? Yes, hop in, Dennis. Come on, everybody. I'm driving. Now, let's see. Uh, where's the starter, Rochester? Right there on the floor next to the mousetrap. <laughs> Oh, yes. Mice, I'm getting out of here. Don't worry, Mary. There was one little mouse living in the toolbox. Little mouse? He came out and hit me with a hammer, didn't he? <laughs> oh, stop exaggerating. Now, hold on, everybody. We're off. There we are. See how easy the car rides when I handle it, Rochester? Uh-huh. All you have to do is know how to drive it, that's all. Uh-huh. That's all there is to it. I'm doing all right, ain't I, Mary? Yeah, but you look pretty silly with those goggles on. I do, eh? And turn your cap around. Who do you think you are, Barney Oldfield? I'll wear my cap any way I want to. Uh-huh. Shut up! <laughs> oh, Don, uh, you're not nervous with me driving, are you? No, Jack, uh, but what makes the car weave from side to side? With this new tire on, it's gone nuts. <laughs> well, it does throw me off a little. I'll hold the wheel tighter. Somebody wants to pass us. Pull over at the side, Rochester. You're driving, boss. Oh, yes. <laughs> come on, come on. How can people drive that fast? guy like that ought to get a ticket. Was that Phil Harris, Mr. Benny? No, Phil's got a red sport model with a blonde siren. <laughs> hey, fellas, you know, it's, uh, it's fun, uh, it's fun being at the wheel for a change. Hey, Jack, pull over. Somebody else wants to pass us. Okay, okay. <laughs> It's a hay wagon. Yeah. 
Well, Jack, do you mean to say you're going to let a team of horses pass us? They weren't ordinary horses, Don. The one on the outside looked like Indian broom. <laughs> hey, fellas, look at that sign. Yosemite National Park, 23 miles. Gee, I just got time to knit a sweater. <laughs> you have not. Allowing for the hills and everything, we'll be there in a couple of hours. Say, boss, you want me to drive for a while? No, I don't want to bother changing seats. You don't have to change, just hand me the wheel. <laughs> Don't be smart. I'll drive, Rochester. Everybody has to be so comical. You go to heavens, another speed demon. It looks like Phil Harris's car. It is Phil. Pull over, Jack. Pull over nothing. He's not going to beat me to Yosemite. I'm going to hog the road. Keep on honking, Phil. That ain't going to help any. Come on, pull that egg beater out of the way. Oh, boy, is he burning up. Jack, you're right in the center of the road. I know what I'm doing. I'll teach that guy to show off. Come on, Jackson. I'm in a hurry. Let me by. Oh, no, Phil. Get in line. From now on, this is going to be a parade. What's that? Pull over to the side, buddy. What do you think you're doing? Who, me, officer? Yes, you, and make it snappy. Here, Rochester, you sit at the wheel. It's too late now, boss. What's the idea of blocking the highway? Don't you know it's against the law? Well, gee, officer... Let me see your driver's license. I'm glad you got that guy, officer. He's a menace to safe driving. I was only kidding, Phil Harris, and you know it. Look, officer, we're friends. Friends? Huh? I never saw this guy before in my life. I think he's crazy. Why, Phil Harris, you mean to say that... May you... I go now, officer? I'm a physician and I'm on a rush call. Go right ahead, doctor. <laughs> doctor? He's no more doctor than I am. By the way, officer, uh, I'd inspect the trunk in the back of his car. I think there's a body in it. <laughs> Why, Phil Harris... So long, officer. Goodbye, doctor. Now, look, officer... I've had about enough out of you. Let's have that driver's license. Now, look, officer, you see, I'm taking my little family to Yosemite. I worked hard all year and saved up every penny, and this was to be our vacation up in the snow. <laughs> you say one word, Mary Livingston. And... <laughs> I realize, officer, that I've broken the law, but I'd just hate to have anything upset the vacation plans of my little family. I see. Well, I'm a family man myself, and I appreciate what this trip means to you, so I'll let you go this time. But in the future, keep to the right. Oh, I will, officer, I will. Way over to the side. <laughs> Gee, thanks very much. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> well, that was a close call. All right, relax, fellas, and let's get started. Can I drive now, Daddy? <laughs> I'll drive till we get there. Well, here we are, fellas, coming into Yosemite. A fine time to be getting in, 10 o'clock at night. Well, we had mountains to climb. There were a lot of curves. Oh, Rochester, where are you? Right beside you, boys. It's dark. <laughs> Well, either open your eyes or smile. <laughs> There's the gate, fellas, Yosemite National Park. Hooray! Hooray! Boy, what fun we're gonna have. We'll check in at the Iwani Hotel, have a nice hot shower, a little supper, and get to bed so we can get up early in the morning, go out and play in the snow. Oh, boy. How are we gonna get through that gate? It's closed. Well, naturally it's closed. You gotta pay $2 to get into the park. There's the ranger station right there. Here comes the ranger now. Good evening, folks. Uh, good evening. Uh, we're on our way. We want to go to the Iwani Hotel to spend a few days there. That's $2 to get in, isn't it? Yes, but you can't get through tonight. The park closes at 10 p.m. What? I'm sorry, but we we don't open until 6 o'clock in the morning. 6 o'clock in the morning? Well, what are we going to do to land? There's a lovely auto camp just 40 miles back. I know. We stayed there last night. <laughs> Now, look, look, mister, can't you make an exception just for tonight? I'm sorry, I'd like to help you out, but rules are rules. I see. Good night. Good night. Well, this is the last straw. What are we going to do now, Jack? I don't know. I got a couple of tents in the back of the car. We can put them up. Yeah, that'll be fun. Oh, everything is fun to you. <laughs> 
Well, Dennis is right. It won't hurt to rough it once in a while. It'll be good for us. Uh-oh. Oh, my goodness. Don't tell me it's going to rain now. That's all we need. Well, we might just well spend the night right here in the car. We're all tired anyway, and we'll sleep till morning. That's right, Jack. It'll only be a few hours. Oh, gone. It looks like it's really going to rain. Huh? My brunion's bouncing, if that means anything. <laughs> here it comes. Well, good night, fellas. Good night, Jack. Good night, Mr. Benny. Good night. Dennis, you don't have to put your pajamas on. <laughs> Well, good night, Mary. Pleasant dreams. Keep them. Hmm. Oh, nuts. So we leave our little group sleeping peacefully with the rain beating a lullaby on top of the car. What will happen in the morning? Will they finally reach a Wani hotel in Yosemite? Will they go skiing? Will Jack fall down and break his crown? I hope so. Tune in next Sunday night and find out. Play, Phil. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pretend I'm the postman delivering a valentine to your home. Just uh, tear open the envelope and you'll find it's a valentine from all of us to all of you. A brand new Jell-O recipe for Valentine's Day. It's called Jell-O Valentine Hearts. Rich crimson hearts made of delicious cherry Jell-O, strikingly arranged on heart-shaped pieces of white cake. And here's how easy it is to make. In one pint of hot water, dissolve one package of cherry Jell-O or any red Jell-O flavor you prefer. Turn into a shallow pan and chill until firm. Then cut into hearts with a heart-shaped cutter and arrange on heart-shaped pieces of cake. Serve plain or garnish with whipped cream and you'll have a swell dessert for Valentine's Day that's really distinctive. So whether you plan to have a Valentine's party or just a regular family dinner, give the meal a festive touch with Jell-O Valentine hearts and let me tell you, you'll win every heart at the table. It's still raining. <clears throat> this is the last number of the 19th program in the current Jello series. Ooh. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, while we're sitting out here in the rain, I want to congratulate the Boy Scouts of America who are this week celebrating their 30th anniversary. You know, Mary, I used to be a Boy Scout. Quiet, I'm trying to sleep. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Oh. And here's more fun and enjoyment for you. Tune in every Tuesday night for another swell half hour of Jell-O entertainment, the famous Aldrich family. See your local paper for time and station. <laughs> it's a blue world is from music in my heart. This is the National Broadcasting Company. program in the current Jell-O series. Ooh. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, while we're sitting out here in the rain, I want to congratulate the Boy Scouts of America who are this week celebrating their 30th anniversary. You know, Mary, I used to be a Boy Scout. Quiet, I'm trying to sleep. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> J-E-L-L-O oh. And here's more fun and enjoyment for you. Tune in every Tuesday night for another swell half hour of Jell-O entertainment, the famous Aldrich family. See your local paper for time and station. <laughs> it's a blue world is from music in my heart. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>